What's going on y'all? This is Trice and I want to welcome you to another installment of One of One. Today I'm here with my guy Corey and we're going to be breaking down a few of the top players in this year's draft looking at how they're going to be able to make their impact at the next level. This is my guy Corey. Uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself to talk about kind of what you got going on. Uh, what's going on everyone? Uh, my name's Corey Tulliba. That's where you can find me on Twitter and whatnot. I am one of the founders of No Ceilings NBA, which is a multimedia platform dedicated to covering the NBA draft. Uh, you know, 24-7, 365, we cover draft prospects and, uh, you know, we, we got podcasts, we got YouTube channels, we write about them, we release content uh, Monday through Friday. Uh, delivered to your inbox every day when you subscribe so you know we we go harder in in this draft game than anybody uh you know our goal is to to take over the space and and i think you know that's what we've been doing facts yeah y'all if you guys don't know now you know it. go check out some of the stuff they got going on over at no ceiling some great guys over there got a few friends that are doing some content for them and you guys are absolutely killing it right now um if you're interested in the nba draft and you like some of the stuff we go over today be sure to check out the things that they're putting out over there because there's a lot of good in-depth things about all um top prospects and even some prospects you probably don't know about that you will know very soon so today, the number one guy that I have been intrigued about in this draft and that I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on is Chet Holmgren, the unicorn. We've been hearing about Chet Holmgren for, for years since he was since he crossed up Steph Curry at the prospect camp a few years ago. Everybody's been talking about Chet Holmgren and what he's going to be doing in the NBA and how we should look out for him. Um, so real quick, just I want to hear your initial thoughts on Holmgren as a prospect and kind of what your just kind of first thoughts are about him. Well, I, you know, I'll just come out and say he's my number one prospect in the class. And he's pretty much been that the whole way through uh, mm -hmm. since, you know, the first game that I watched him play in. I, I just said, this is a guy who is everything you want out of the modern NBA. And I see a guy who you know, epitomizes length, skill, IQ, and versatility, all things that I think are at a premium in the modern NBA. And I understand the concerns, you know, with the frame and he's skinny and whatnot, but I just think he offers so much to a team on both ends of the floor. I think that he didn't get to show his full bag offensively in college. I think when he's in an environment that runs a more free-flowing offense with more space, I think he's going to show some stuff that is really going to wow people. As you said, you know, he's been on the radar since he crossed Steph. He's capable of doing some stuff like that. And we didn't see a whole lot of it this year uh, for Gonzaga, for a team that, you know, mostly ran a lot of their stuff through Drew Timmy and, and you know, even like Andrew Nemhard. So I, I, I'm, I'm a big believer that he, he showed only a portion of what he's capable of offensively while being capable of anchoring you know a, a defense in a way that is going to give you a top defense every single year just by the impact he has when he's on the floor so when you you factor in that two-way versatility uh chet's really a guy that has just intrigued me the the, the whole time because it, he's he's just such a unique player and it's it, it's almost hard to picture him in the league because we've never really seen anybody like him you know the, you've seen sean bradley who maybe looks like him yeah. physically but like there the t the the skill level is night and day right like the evolution of what players are now and, and what chet is um he's just a, an unbelievably unique prospect that intrigues the hell out of me right and that's the number one thing that stood out to me like from the jump that especially this year now that he's had a little more of a national platform to play on is watching him play like he's got his low points but like when when he hits those flashes of of blocking a shot bringing it down uh you know blocking a shot getting the rebound bringing it down by himself and you know crossing somebody and finishing the play or getting a dunk in that split moment it's it's how can you not be the number one pick just based off of what he could become alone and so uh to me that's what makes chet if not the number one pick definitely the the player in this draft with the most potential to me i think by far because of just the places he could go if he can kind of bring all this potential together and kind of manifest it into reality i mean the 
is it, that's that's the thing and and i think that's the big question mark also is can he take this potential like all this like things that we want him to become and actually become them but uh you know looking at it from an intangible uh point of view just kind of what he already has that i think is going to translate immediately is there's like as far as his his defense and his size the way he's able to use those on the defensive end with his 7-3 7-3 and a half wingspan knowing where the paint knowing how to move around the paint around the rim like those are things that are going to immediately translate that has nothing to do with his potential offensively just his his presence in the paint being able to be there defensively um do you think that offensively he'll be able to make that much of an impact right away um without having the the size necessarily he needs to bang down low with some guys or is that something that teams are gonna have to wait on and he's gonna develop over time as he gets stronger I mean, I, I don't think he's going to be a, a, a big-time number one scorer type player when he comes in right away. But I think that's hard for any rookie, even you know the the guys who are billed as such when they come into the league, because there's such a steep learning curve and like you you mentioned the physicality. But you know, I, I also don't really look at him as a guy who was ever going to bang down low even when you watch him in high school he wasn't a guy you threw the ball into in the post and were just like go to work he was much more comfortable kind of in like that mid post area where he could do those little like dirk fades or the kd like turnarounds Hmm. so to me he's much more of that like skill finesse guy than like let him bang in the post but with that said he's also fully capable of being like i think an elite role man rim runner uh type as well and you know he finished over 84 i think 84 percent of his attempts Mm. at the rim this year including transition i think it was about 70 and a half court so you know when you're looking at a guy and you're wondering about his frame and is he gonna hold up is that gonna stop him from finishing like it's one of those things where it's like almost a a lot of conjecture because he's never at any level had trouble and he's been dominant Mm -hmm. um doing it and and that's ignoring the fact that he's also tough as nails and he goes right he enjoys the physicality it's not like he's soft so i I think he's a guy that embraces it um and i think he's just so skilled and and he'll find ways to to contribute offensively early on as he grows his bag i had a front office executive text me uh, recently and he goes i just spent three days with chet keep all of your stock Mm -hmm. and like and i i didn't bring him up he just it was one of those things where he was so impressed that he, he kind of had to let me know what he was watching. And, and I, I think that, you know, he, that's, that's a good point. Like he's, he really hasn't shown everything he's capable of at the next level. And everything that he has shown in college is impressive enough that I think you're, you're looking at a guy who's going to be able to get buckets right away, just not as like your primary go-to guy. So aside from the, um lack of physicality or like the need to build strength what would you say is his biggest room for improvement at the next level obviously that's the big thing to me like an example would be i think he needs to get a little bit better at finishing with contact around the rim he has a lot of good finesse moves which is awesome to see from a seven footer but like for me it's like He needs to be able to finish against contact a little easier. He's not going to get all like the, he's not going to be able to avoid all the contact at the next level. What's some of those things for you that he needs like to improve on to really reach um, some immediate success in the league? I think so. One, like I, he shot it really well from three, Mm -hmm. but I think sometimes he hesitates to let it fly. Mm -hmm. And I think that he like he's a guy that he had he's so tall he's got such a high release and he's got such a smooth stroke that i would like to see him just let it fly even with a hand in his face sometimes Mm -hmm. and not not be hesitant because especially at the next level i think that if he can get guys to consistently bite on him out on the perimeter with the extra room that he has you're going to see lanes develop towards the rim and when he gets going with a little momentum you know he goes to his little go-to move where he'll get you going one way and then he'll do this quick spin and you know Mm -hmm. finish with length right i love what you said about him needing to become a more aggressive shooter because like i love it i think he's i really like his his shot like honestly his shot is extremely smooth for a guy his size and he can get it off like you multiple times during the season he brought the ball up in transition and pulled from the top of the key like it's he's very good at like the energy transfer from off the dribble into the jumper like he has all that in his bag 
I would just like to see him do it a little bit more. And I think that's kind of can be the segue from kind of where he is now versus to like where he could be is just like his mentality of like aggressively scoring the ball. Big question, the one you've probably answered multiple times before, kind of where do you see Chet Holmgren falling uh, come draft night? And then what do you see his immediate impact being on whatever team you see him kind of uh, falling to? Uh, I mean, honestly, I, I have no idea how this top three is going to play <laughs> out. All the rumors point to Orlando taking Jabari, right? But this is smoke screen season. So right. it, it, when you look at historically the type of player that Orlando targets, dating back, I think even pre Giannis, um, John Hammond, when he was the GM of the Bucks, like he loves those long, lanky guys who are just like have all of this skill. <laughs> And you, Mo Bamba, Jonathan Isaac, Giannis, John Henson, Larry Sanders. Like, when you look at that, to me, it screams Chet. So, to me, a lot of the Jabari kind of seems like a smokescreen. But uh, at the same time, I don't see any way he goes. If OKC stays at two, mm -hmm. I think he's definitely a Sam Presti guy. Uh, so, I would say two is his floor. And then there's a lot of rumors that. Sacramento's trying to trade up to two. Some right. people are saying that it's, you know, only it's already a done deal. I don't really buy that. And if Sacramento's trading up, I would imagine he's the the target there as well. So I would say his floor is two, but draft night is unpredictable, man. And like it would not shock me at all if for some reason, whatever reason, he went four. Okay. That's kind of where I'm leaning. Right now, I've got him going two to Oklahoma City. It all depends on Orlando. If Orlando wants to go that way, the safer route, or if they want to kind of roll the dice and go with Holmgren. But I've got him going two. I'd love to see him in Oklahoma City. I think him with Giddy and Shea, Shea Gilgis Alexander would be such a fun young core. Like, that team would immediately be one of the funnest teams in the NBA to watch, just off of how unorthodox that lineup would be. And, like, the ways they could, like attack you from a, such a unconventional point of view like all the different ways they can attack would just be absolutely nutty to watch so from a selfish standpoint i kind of would just want to see him end up in oklahoma city but also just kind of feel like it could practically go practically go down that way i mean i think my final thoughts on chet holmgren i think he's he's a prospect that's built for the nba like he he fits all the molds of like where the game is headed I think he can have like a generational impact on the game. I really think that, that he can be that type of player. Um, like I said, the highest ceiling in the draft. I think the biggest question is just going to be, can he develop those aspects of his game that make him reach that like otherworldly potential that we've been pinning on him all this time? And if he can, then I think any team would regret not drafting him number one at the end of the day because of just the player he can become. I agree with you, and, and I think that a lot of the, the dialogue with Chet thus far reminds me of how people talked about Luka. It was hard to question Luka's basketball accomplishments. It was really just like an overthinking of like, oh, he's doing it in Europe, or, you know, is he going to be athletic enough, right. you know, this and that, where he on the court, he just consistently proved that he was dominant at such a young age. And Luca is somebody who could be an all time top 10 guy. Like that's his potential down the line. So I'm not saying that Chet has that same potential, but I think that a lot of the, the skepticism with Chet isn't really necessarily basketball related. It's a lot of conjecture that really is like, it's worried about, is he going to get injured? And it's like, well, he's never really had injuries right now. So it's, and I understand the concerns. It's easy to look at a guy who looks so weird, but from a strictly basketball standpoint, He's been dominant at every level. MVP of the FIBA tournament this, you know, past season. Right. Um, you know, historically great college season from an advanced stat perspective as a freshman up there with Zion and AD. So I, I agree. I think he could be like have a superstar impact on an organization. And, and like you mentioned, you, you add him to SGA and Giddy and Trey Mann and w whatever they get with the 12th pick and potentially the 30th pick and you're looking at a team that all of a sudden you could go oh my god like this yeah. team is loaded for the next 12 years and, right uh so it's gonna it would be really exciting if that was the outcome i think they would do a really fantastic job of developing them down there all right Corey. well i appreciate you hopping on with me and talking about chet holmgren um if you have any other 
Um, as far as anybody watching, if you have any other uh, comments or suggestions or you want to just reach out to my guy, Corey, go ahead and give your Twitter handle. Go ahead and give your information so people can find you on social media. Yes, sir. You can uh, find me at Corey Tulliba on Twitter, the NBA Draft Dude on YouTube, No Ceilings TV on YouTube, and the Draft Act NBA Draft Podcast, anywhere podcasts are available, and then NoCeilingsNBA.com. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, we're going to be doing a few more of these guys to bring you um, some more breakdowns of some of these top players. But again, be sure to be looking out uh, for more stuff coming from Corey and No Ceilings very soon, and we'll catch y'all next time. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to drop a like, leave feedback in the comment section below, and subscribe for more. We got some exciting things coming up soon, and you don't want to miss out, so be sure to ring that notifications bell, and be on the lookout for full episodes of 101 on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as soon as they come available.